Good afternoon. Today's theme is DK, and I'm here speaking to you today as a scientist. I took my PhD and did research in astrophysics, and for the past several years, I'm working as a data scientist. And as far as I can tell, I'm the only scientist in my family on either side. And looking back now, I remember when I was growing up and was in college, and people asked me, uh, relatives, friends of the family, uh, just people in the neighborhood, they asked me, what are you picking up in college? And I tell them, physics. I would get, usually get a strong response. And looking back, I think most of the responses can be one of essentially two different kinds. And I'll share them with you today. The first kind is one of surprise. Sometimes accompanied by awe. As in, wow, physics! Ang hirap yan. That's so difficult. I don't remember how I passed that, or I almost flunked that subject. Uh, I remember a professor, no one understands him or her, and so on and so on. And suddenly, I become an intimidating alien. Perhaps a smart and impressive one, but nonetheless, someone they cannot relate to. And the conversation stops there. The other type of response comes usually from relatives. And it comes as a question and a concern. They would say, Physics? I don't got going with Jan. Or, what would you do after you graduate? And they're really genuinely worried that there's no future for me. They're concerned that there's no bright career for someone like me studying a science major. And in fact, I think they're being polite. In their minds, they're probably thinking, how on earth did your parents allow you, someone so intelligent and full of promise, to choose a career path and throw your life away? For the most part, I actually didn't mind these reactions, <coughs> found a way to get through them politely. And in fact, internally, I took some pride in being different, in taking a different path. And, it, and it's not an uncommon experience. Uh, it's the same experience for my peers, for taking science uh, majors and careers, and for even the science majors today, some of whom uh, in this audience. And what I realized is that, is that these responses actually reflect how our society views science. How poorly science is appreciated and valued in our society. See, for most Filipinos, when they think of science, they think of something difficult. Something intimidating, and this can even be a visceral experience. And they think of something that's not practical, something therefore that's not for them, something that they cannot relate to. And this is quite unfortunate, because this is not at all an accurate reflection of what science is, and definitely not in my experience. Science is a wonderful endeavor that allows us to understand the world around us. So for me, science is about asking questions. Just like we did when we were children, when we were naturally curious about the world around us. And science is about finding answers by testing things out, by doing experiments, seeing what happens, and observing. Again, it's something that we naturally did when we were younger, when we were not afraid to test things out just for the sake of testing and trying new things, and to learn. In fact, this is how children learn. It's the most natural thing in the world. 
And science is about solving problems and making a difference. Because science underlies everything there is and everything we do, it allows us to understand the world, understand our past, predict our future, solve problems, invent new things, and make the world a better place. What can be more practical, indeed more powerful than that? So now, I think we have to ask the question, why is it that science is intimidating for most of us? Why is it that most Filipinos cannot relate to science? Well, it is not inherently difficult and intimidating. And, with, and when you think about it, I realize that one big part of the answer is how science is taught in our schools. In school, where we first have a serious encounter with science, science is presented as a huge, complicated, unchanging body of knowledge. In the classroom, science is about the answers, a dizzying array of facts you need to memorize. It's not about asking questions and not about the process of getting at the answers. Sadly, also, Many of our own teachers also view science as difficult and intimidating. Even the ones who teach science. So it's not surprising that this attitude is passed on to your students, some of whom become teachers, and pass it on to their students. But it doesn't have to be this way. There are also many teachers that make science alive in their classroom. And I found myself lucky that I had many of these teachers as my own. One real example is my friend, Sal Kiko. She's a biology major, in fact, we were batchmates, and she found a calling in being a public school teacher. She teaches science to grade six students in Kuliat Elementary School in Quezon City. And in her classroom, science is active, fun, and awesome. Here she is with her students um, on the day of their lesson on solutions, colloids, and suspensions. For that class, they made a tornado in a bottle, marbleized eggs, and one she's holding, um, and get this, their very own ice cream. How cool is that? Something that the grade six student will remember for the, le the rest of her or his life. Sam clearly loves science deeply. And through her example and her creative lessons and activities in class, she makes sure that her students also have this love for science. In another activity, Sam asked her students to come up with inventions that can help people with disabilities. Here, two groups are showing off their projects just made from everyday materials, a prosthetic arm and a prosthetic leg. And these activities sound simple, but they're actually very powerful and leave a profound impression on the kids. Because instead of just learning and reading about scientists, here they can play the role of scientists and inventor themselves. And it clearly demonstrates that science can be used to impact society and can be very meaningful. It has the purpose of helping other people. Another large role that plays, that shapes how we view science in our society is played by the media. And in the Philippines, science and scientists are severely underexposed and do not get the attention they deserve, especially in the mainstream media. When I was younger, I was lucky to enjoy science shows on TV like Pitman's World and Cine Escuela. Some of you may still remember the theme songs. Um, today, I, I, I found myself grateful and lucky to be part of Knowledge Channel's new science show, Science Sex. 
In the show, we ask questions and do simple experiments using everyday materials that even young kids can do at home or in school. What would happen if you fill a plastic bag with water and then poke a pencil through it? Will the water leak? No. Now you're right. It's one thing to guess the, the answer that the water won't leak and quite another to actually do it yourself and see firsthand. So, in this show, we find out about the science that underlies common everyday objects around us, like plastics and polymers, the science of pitch, phosphorescence, and pillars and their shapes, just in the first few episodes. My hope is that this inspires students, teachers, and even parents to try things out themselves and come up with their own science experiments. Our goal is to share the joy of science to Filipinos wherever they are. So now, I want to leave us with this question. Imagine if you live in a society where science is not intimidating. We live in a country where most people get excited by science and think that it's for them. I think it will be a very different world. I think it will be one where we will not be afraid to ask questions and challenge assumptions. One in which we will be open to trying new things and see how we can improve the status quo. And it will be one where we will all be seeking to use science and technology to solve our problems, manage our resources, and make a better future for our country and for the world. I, for one, would like to live in that world, and I hope you do too. We can all play a part. Next time you hear about cool science news, first ever image of a black hole, or discovery of ancient human bones right in our neighborhood in northern Luzon, that's evidence for a new, possible new human species. Be amazed and be curious. Learn about it and share it with your family, with your friends. Talk to your coworkers and classmates and be the richer for it. And please, the next time a young person tells you that they're in the STEM track in senior high or they're doing a science major in college or in graduate school, tell them that you think science is cool and that they are building the future. Ask them about their interests and their work. Continue the conversation. Listen to them. I promise you will be amazed. Thank you very much.